So to recap where we left off, we encountered Mr. Lord Harold. Mr. Lord Harold, that's how titles work. And Lady Elise has been missing somewhere around here for days. And he thinks the villagers are intentionally keeping information from him. So at this point, I'm going to want to take a look around. Just to see if I can find any helpful information around here. Sure. Maybe we'll run, see if I can go back behind this counter. If anyone will care as I swan... Who's Pace? Also, what's all this stuff? Can I take it? Can, I, can it be mine? Is someone currently looking at me? Who's noticing me right now? Is my stealth that bad? If I take the if I take beer, are they gonna be mad at me? Uh, oh no, I lost reputation with the Deerford Village. All right, maybe I shouldn't steal from them all the time. My bad. Can I put it back? <laughs> What are you doing in the kitchen? Dangler will get you sorted out when, with food and drink. Okay, sorry. Alright, let's not steal for in town anymore. People get, might get mad at me. And then I'll, that'll make it harder to steal the things that actually matter. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's the Will Wheaton and Felicia Day painting. The portrait depicts a man and a woman dressed in Eder garb that would have been in style a century ago. The heavy frame has been battered and the plate that once bore the patron's name has been scratched out. They share a passionate embrace, which seems at odds with the disgust on their faces. Wow. What a specific reference to make in here. Yeah, okay. That's Will Wheaton and Felicia Day from the show The Guild. That, yep, I know that painting. Weird. Oh, there's also things in, oh. Those are way more video game looking. I can't really make them out from here though. There's like a skull? Yeah, I can't. It's so small, I can't look at it from here. And I unfortunately can't inspect those ones. But looks like there's definitely Easter eggs on the walls throughout these areas. Let's see, down to Valero. That's probably not someone has anything important to say. It's probably just, hey, you can look, you can talk to me. And you'll get a weird memory from me. Oh, right, everyone. I should really just move as a full party sometimes. Because of the awkward way they have to follow me around. I'm going to check around upstairs and see if we can find any information about the whereabouts of, Lord of, of Lady Elise. Otherwise, we're going to have to wander around out elsewhere. Hmm? Who's coming up the stairs? They heard me. I'll take a look. First of all, who is currently noticing no me? Oh, only, only one of us has been noticed, and it's because he's the big heavy guy in heavy armor. Do I want to start opening these doors? Is there anyone in here? There is not. What can I find in here? This won't stop me for long. I cannot open that. Okay. This won't stop me for long, or it'll stop me forever, is what he meant to say. Go in fast mode because sneaking is so slow, and I don't have patience. That's people. I might get in trouble for walking around in there. And we already know there's someone in here, right? So I might get in trouble if I wander through here. Hey, guys. These people not, might not be happy with us. The Orlin hovers by the window, peering out of it every few seconds. As you enter the room, she watches you carefully, her hand hovering over her stiletto. She cranes her head to peer at you. Anyone follow you? Who sent you? Uh, they're trying to meet somebody here, and I'm not the person they're trying to meet. Uh, I, w I was just looking around. The man leans against the wall. The man leaning against the, uh, leaning against the wall glances at the door and nods to the Orlin. The hand over her weapon relaxes, but she's still watching you closely. Some old friends from Divine's Bay are looking for me. We're not exactly friends anymore if you catch my drift. I'm just trying to lie low and mind my own business, know what I mean? Boss, the Amawa looks at the Orlin and jerks his head at you. All right, all right. She raises a hand to the Amawa before turning her back to, hit her, turning back to you. My friend here thinks you could maybe help us out. Now, I'm sure you're a busy man, so I'll make my, it worth your time. She flips you a few coins. Just go take a look around town. Come back and let me know if the coast is clear or if you see any suspicious figures. You're pretty suspicious. What's this about? She scratches the back of her neck. I may have gotten myself into trouble with some powerful people in Defiance Bay. Powerful criminal people. I suppose it was bound to happen eventually. I'm a thief by trade, and it's hard to do, to do my kind of business in the city without crossing them eventually. Now, I'm just trying to put some distance between us. I'll report back if I find any anyone skulking in a corner and cackling maniacally. Why not? We're already going to be exploring the town any anyway. Might as well get other benefits for other people. Open name near... 
Nifri is on the run and hiding out in Deerford. Nifri told me someone's looking for her, asked me to check around town for suspicious figures. Wouldn't get into specifics, but claimed she'd cross some powerful criminals in Defiance Bay. They have a wolf companion. Oh, they're like a they're like a full party of people, just like I am. Well, I'm probably I probably don't want to start stealing stuff from their room. Let's see. Is there other people I can talk to? Hooded man. He jerks his head at the woman in the middle of the room. Yeah, these people probably don't want to talk to me. Hmm? So I think it's time to leave. We'll see what I can find back downstairs. Well, back outside. As we explore more of the village looking for hooded, creepy figures and uh, also no this person's daughter that has gone missing. So we're outside again in Deerford Village where it's apparently grown dark. We can go to the mill. We can go to the Temple of Barath. The Arms and Armory, Apothecary, and Curie. So that's, there's two things I want to go to immediately, I think. Uh, if I want to find out information about a missing person, the temple is probably more likely to be full of more truthful people, depending on what religion they uh, follow anyway. I might be thinking of like, Western religion, when it could be any sort of weird religious, it could be, it could be the religion of liars, to counter the religion of truth and shit like that. And also, these ruins seem suspicious. They seem like a type of place you might be able to find creepy people conniving around town and looking for people. So we'll head over there. Anyone gonna try to stop us as we continue? The athletic skill is used to perform actions like climbing, swimming, and jumping in scripted interactions. Classes like fighters and barbarians start with a bonus to athletics. I don't know why they suddenly brought that up. Weird, weird tutorials are popping up. How long we gotta stand out here? until we find her, so keep your eyes peeled. That seems to be exactly who is looking for the people. Oh, I guess the question here is, they said to find her, are they looking for the thief or, the, or are they working for the king and trying to find, they could, be, they could be working for, they could be looking for the thief as we just discovered, or they could be looking for the king's daughter. Uh, one is much more friendly to me than the other one potentially, let's try to quick save. Is that the quick save button? Yes it is, I remembered what button it was. The party, has gained 125 copper. All right, not bad. Let's try to avoid losing any more uh, experience though. I mean, no reputation. So I'm gonna try talking to this person to see if they to try to figure out who they're looking for. An elf idles by the road watching the village across the river. He nods as you approach and, and the cowled figure standing near him falls silent. Greetings. A look of horror slowly forms in his face, blazes. You've just come from the village, have you? How bad was it? How bad was what? Haven't you heard? There's a murderer on the loose, said to have gone mad with grief and strangled a dozen healthy children when her own was hollow-born. He nods at the figures with him. We've come all the way from Defiance Bay to bring her to justice. She's here? He nods across the river. She's hiding out in the village. We'd go in after her ourselves, but the problem is she knows our faces. There's no telling what she'd do if she saw us coming. And we'd like to avoid any further unnecessary bloodshed. He leans closer. Her name's Nefri. She's an Orlin. She wanted to get her she wanted to get her We want to get her out of town so we can deal with her cleanly. She knows we're looking for her, but if someone were to convince her that it's safe to leave. Oh, this is a predicament. So he's claiming that she's a murderer. And she's claiming she's a thief that's on the run. She didn't necessarily seem crazy. Huh. I gotta say, when I talked to her, she didn't seem like the crazy person that would have killed... A do was it like a dozen orphans? Is that what he said? Yes, she strangled a dozen children. Someone who strangles a dozen children doesn't usually have like a following of like a personal guard. So I'm thinking she's probably just actually a thief, and this is just the really big nasty story these people are telling to draw her out. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna pretend, I'm gonna do, do what I can to avoid saying I know who she is. Uh, I'm not so sure about this. He lays a strong hand on your shoulder. A mad woman like that is everyone's problem, friend. Just keep an eye out. If you come across her, remember what I told you. I promise I'll make it worth your while. I have a few questions for you. Maybe if we find out more information about what they have to say, we can either have more evidence to believe them with or poke more holes in their story. What is it? 
What did Nef What did Nefri do exactly? She was responsible for the murder of all those babies in Defiance Bay, remember? Terrible thing. But we'll make her pay, alright. Well, any luck with Nefri? Yeah, I'm not really buying that she's just like a random baby murderer with that has like a following. And it seems relatively intelligent and not like a crazy person. I'm also looking for a woman named Elise Harund. Have you seen her? Afraid not. I've just been watching for Nefri. I should get back to the search. So, no new information about the person we were looking for, but we have an immediate progress with Nefri. Yeah? I think before I go on with my original plan, I'm going to try to just push forward with, uh... No go, problem. Let's go right back in the inn and try to progress the, uh, story here. Maybe I should I be Hello? in stealth mode? Hello? Anyone else could potentially see me, but I'm going to go in stealth mode just to try to avoid... If I can, them following me there and seeing me go back to the inn. I don't know if, if they follow me at this point or not. But I can definitely give them an update on the situation. So at this point, I'm inclined to believe her about the whole thief thing. Because the baby strangling thing seems like a far-fetched thing you, you do to try to draw out somebody you're trying to catch. By making sure you have a horrible story no one would ever side with. Sure. Oops, I'm still in fast mode. So I'm going to try to trust her for now. Welcome. How's it looking out there? See anyone suspicious? Oh, you can make so many choices here. You can say go east to warn Meredith's waiting for you just west of the river. Or you can lie. Say head west towards the temple. The way, that way is clear. And get her caught. Say somebody told me you were responsible for heinous killings in Defiance Bay. Or I'm here to avenge the murdered children of Defiance Bay. Sorry, but Meredith made a better offer. <laughs> Who are you running from? Do you know anything about Elise Herond? Or I'm still looking around, be back later. Let's ask about Elise before we pro progress before we progress anything else, because we need, still need to investigate her. And since she's an outsider, she might not be... If she knows about Elise, and she's an outsider, she might not be a part of the weird conspiracy to keep it quiet, if that even exists. That girl everyone's looking for? She was already missing by the time I got to town. Okay, who are you running from? I'd rather not get into it. Suffice to say, I angered the wrong people back in Defiance Bay. Someone that, someone told me you were responsible for heinous killings in Defiance Bay. Let me guess. Was that someone named Madrith? She draws her stiletto. It's a lie, plain and simple. I got a, on the wrong side of his employers and now he's after me. But if you're here to do his dirty work, I won't make it easy on you. Relax. I just want to hear your side of the story. What story? The, the, the Dominals came after me. I just happened to rob the wrong place. How was I supposed to know they'd already claimed it? She runs her hands under her hood and through her hair, her hair. It was an honest mistake. I'm just trying to survive now, and if you spoke with the Medrith, you know where he's waiting. Please, help me get out of here. Go east. Medrith's waiting for you just west of the river. She nods slowly. All right, I'm trusting you. Don't have much choice. See if you can send him the other way. That should buy me some more time. She follows the hooded figures towards the stairs, giving you a final, uncertain glance as she passes through the door. Well, she chose to trust me for the moment and gave me 750 copper. That's like a significant boost of income, isn't it? Yeah, that's a, that's good. Let's take a look at our, uh, quick look at our keep. Eastern Barbican was constructed. That's like the last thing we accomplished, basically. Let's look into what else we can go into buying. We need a main keep before we can buy a lot of things, right? Yeah, so let's invest in that if I can. 1,400 copper points? I can avoid aff afford that. Upgrading the main keep will repair your great hall, allowing visitors and adventurers to be available to you and your companions. Let's get that busy. Oh, bright, hollow hearth is still already in progress. Whoops. So that's a... How much time do we have left on that? In 14 hours. All right, we'll get back to this. I'm making money. I, I'm actually doing side quests, and I gained 324 experience, which means... Can I level up uh? my, my character now? He's, oh, he's very close. Like, 19 experience away from leveling up close. Next time I wander into some random building I've never been into before, he's going to have enough experience to level up. Yeah? And maybe several other characters, if, I, if I'm lucky. And that's good, because I need some experience, because I am having trouble with any monsters I encounter outside. Before I knew it, the Stelgar was on top of me, and I was face down in the dirt! Arrow to the throat. That stops him. What? No! 
I was spirit shifted, and she was in heat, so I aimed for the throat, but not with an arrow. And that's for the furries. Enjoy. Let's go ahead and move a little faster because it takes a while to run over there. We're going to check in on the other guys and see if we can light them and say... Well, well, I think I assume we're going to lie and say that, that she went to the west. And that's probably going to distract them for a while. He picks up a long blade of grass. Found any free yet? I'm ready to get out of here. She snuck out the back of the inn and went north. He squints at you, pulling the grass into two flimsy threads. Did she now? And how would you have known that? I was just hoping you'd believe me. Madrid withdraws his blade. Don't worry, I'll catch up to her right after I take care of you. Oh, come on, man. You, you told me to... You told me to go find her. Alright, yeah. I may have just been screwed by Nefri. She may have specifically sent me on something... Yeah, she, she might have known that I wasn't going to be able to convince them to go somewhere else, but rather I'm putting myself in a dangerous situation because now I'm revealing myself as, as a collaborator. Well, we're going to get ourselves dirty here. Hey, everybody. We're going to go fuck up some scowled men, apparently. Task completed. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, that was worth doing. Oh no, we lost 445 copper to bandits. That's not very nice. How much How much money do I have now? I'm still doing all right. Anyway, uh, wow. We got 324 earlier, but just now we gained uh, a lot of experience as a result of starting this fight. I guess the question is, can I level up my characters right now? Because if I can, that would certainly be handy. Let's do a quick save. If it'll let me, there we go. And let's start leveling up our characters. The extra benefit of uh, finishing a level up might actually help us during the fight itself. So, I'm gonna wanna focus on, I'm gonna wanna continue to focus on stealth and mechanics for this character, because those are his specialties. Specifically mechanics, I want my ranger to be able to lockpick, because lockpicking is handy skill to have around, and he's the one character that's always gonna be in my party. I assume you can't take him out, but I could be wrong. We have seven points to spend. This will cost four. All right, I can spend the other three on stealth. It's a natural conclusion for that. Oh, look at all these abilities I can pick from. All right. Vicious companion. Uh, my companion gets 15% bonus damage. Wounding shot gets 10, plus 10 accuracy, also handy, just to make sure that when you use that ability, it works. Uh, 10 damage reduction for my companion. The, ra the ranger's animal companion gains improved damage reduction against all damage types. Passive. That, 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 three damage reduction is actually pretty handy, too. Uh, that's, that's three That's three less damage taken for every hit. Less likely to be affected by stats. And... Animal companions do small amounts of sneak attack damage against their targets that qualify. Bonus sneaking damage. I think I'm gonna go for... Let's go for resilient companion, because my wolf goes down very quickly. Like, frustratingly quickly. So it'd be good to be able to f do something about that. So that's Peril out of the way. We'll do our other Ranger first next, just because it's a relatively straightforward process. I could go ahead and focus on Survival Skill with her, just because it's what sets her apart from my Ranger that I already have. So now she has a devastating level 8, uh, level 8 Survival Skill. And similarly, Resilient Companion, because her wolf goes down faster than I'd like to. It's interesting seeing how their 3D character models don't quite look like they're, like they're portraits down there. Let's see. I'm trying to remember. I should take a closer look here. So, we'll specifically look at Eddar real quick. 414 hit points, 83 endurance, just as a base reference. We'll see if those stats get higher when I level them up. 414, 83. Yeah, we definitely want something that'll make Eddar a better tank, just because he's my only option. Uh, definitely gonna put points into athletics. That seems to be his primary skill. And I assume I can let the other points sit and spend it later, so I'm just gonna leave. Bonus to knockdown, is that his only? Oh, he does have odd... Oh, my bad. There are, of course, other categories of stuff to go through. I kind of forgot about that for my rangers. That's fine, though. Animal companions are an important part of their character, so having them 
last longer is handy. Uh, modifies knocks down so I can use it more times per encounter. That's actually pretty handy. I can only use it. I can only use it twice right now. I think. So being able to use it more often could certainly be handy. Weapon focuses for bonus damage. Savage attack. Let's go for defensive abilities. What's some, is there something handy I can use to make myself more effective? One more engaged enemies means that he can tank more than one enemy. Probably what I'm going to go for, because if he's tanking more enemies at once, that means they can't run off and start fighting my other characters, which is handy. Bonus to reflex, fortitude will, uh, deflection, but you have to enter this mode. Weapon shield style, uh, a passive, six shield deflection, and it also applies to reflex. And retreat ability. I want weapon and shield, but I think I want to hold the line first just to make him uh, be a better tank by engaging multiple targets, which makes it dangerous for them to disengage from him, most importantly. And I didn't pick anything that should... I didn't explicitly increase his hit points or anything, so let's see if it... Yep, 496 and 100. Those are... Wow, that actually was a pretty significant increase in stats. So yeah, you get a... You, that's oh yeah right because it's does it's Dungeons and Dragons roll so you get a die roll, yeah, and in D and D every class has a specific stat. Why I can't scroll up for some reason it's scrolling down automatically. Not sure why that's happening. Doesn't matter right now. Anyway, in D and D, your 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 various stats primarily your uh, hit points and stuff go up by a dice roll, and the dice you roll is determined by your class and your uh your vitality stat I believe. Your current emphasis is on lore. I'm going to continue to emphasize that because you might as well have someone who can do everything, right? And what can I give you, Mr. Cleric? I mean, priest. Important difference there. Uh, modifies Holy Radiance to have uh, burn versus will. Let's see. So I can so I can make I can make uh, Holy Radiance to add burn damage. Interdiction, I can... What is this? Oh, Interdiction is a new ability I can do once per encounter. And it dazes enemies in its area of effect. 5.9 radius. Dazing could be handy. Let's check the daze description real quick. Dazes, dazed vi victims have reduced accuracy, dexterity, perception, and intellect, and attack speed. So, yeah. Obviously handy for weakening your opponents during a battle. I'd getting a whole new ability that has a, a per encounter limit assuming it's not the same pool of per encounter limit as the other abilities could be very handy the faithful magran gains the accuracy uh the faithful of magran gain an accuracy bonus with sword and arquebus and can cast a special version of the burst of summer flame grants inspired f a flame passive 10 accuracy so when he's using a sword he gets 10 bonus accuracy okay Aggrandizing Radiance, everyone receives less healing from the Priest's Holy Radiance, but the Priest gains a bonus to all attributes and, move and movement. The healing is actually probably more immediately useful. Oh, wow. 0.25%. So you lose 75% of the heal so that he can get two, plus two of everything. Inspiring Radiance, allies gain an accuracy bonus from the Priest's Holy Radiance. That's also very handy. And bonus first level spell. You get an extra ca spell cast of level one spells. Also very handy, but I think I'm going to go for this new per-encounter spell. Having a good variety of once-per-encounter spells could be handy, because that means I don't have to worry about... See, the problem with, uh, with the level 1 spells and level 2 spells and everything is that if I do too many encounters back-to-back -back and I use them up, they're just gone until I rest again. But things like this that do that can be used every encounter make me more reliable from encounter to, to encounter. So I'll definitely grab Interdiction. Wait, did I... Was that... Was it? Let's cancel the level up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have to make sure I clicked... The, I wasn't... I'm actually sure if I clicked on the right thing after all that. Uh, interdiction is... The day's ability. Okay. Had to make sure I wasn't crazy, because I thought I accidentally clicked on, the, on a spell that wasn't the one I was talking about in the first place. So now he'll be able to cast that. Very handy. Go ahead and level up Kana. Give him, yeah. I mean, lore is part of his character, so that makes sense. Uh, do I want to give him that bonus stealth? Investing in stealth this late in the game seems kind of pointless. 
So I'm gonna let him be an additional lore character, even if it's a little redundant. Hey, there's more than there's more than five characters, so someone's gonna have the same focus. So what do I want to learn here? I can learn invocations. Only level one. Okay. So this one gives me it's a first level spell, so it's not a new phrase, it's when you have a bunch of phrases done. It summons a phantom. Calls beyond the shroud and summons a phantom to fight for the party. Could be handy. Phantoms probably are, are harder to hit than a skeleton because they're probably a weird ghost creature. So they might be more reliable in some ways. Although a horde of skeletons has a certain distraction aspect that could be handy too. Uh, and El oh yeah, that, that was called, but Renai Derrit's ghost, he would not rest. This one is called, and Helhiraf crashed upon thy sh the shield. Uh, reduces damage reduction of enemies in the area of effect. So you essentially nullify some of their armor so that they can take better damage. And it's a cone ability, also requires three th three uh, phrases chanted. Huh, very situational. Not felled by the axe nor broken by the storm. Increases slash and shock damage reductions for all allies in the area of effect. So it's an AoE defense boost, also requires three phrases. Thrice was she wronged and thrice uh, justly avenged. Drains electrostatic energy from the environment to create three bolts of lightning, causing shock damage to any in their path. A nice, dangerous shock damage could actually be pretty fun. Fortune 21 is not very high shock damage, though. Especially for such a charge up. White worms writhe in the bellies of the dead, cause nearby downed enemies to explode, expelling white grubs and crushing nearby enemies. Uh, that could be strong if there's enough downed enemies in the area. A handy thing about that, I might go for that, because I want to get the ghost ability, but I already have skeletons, so the another summon might be a little redundant, but having an ability that does AoE around the dead could be handy, since by the time he successfully has three chants done, often there's a dead enemy at that point, so that could be a very effective spell indeed. Just have to be careful it's not going to wipe out my own party. Now the class unlocks. Beloved spirits improves Chantra's connection to the soul fragments they employ, increasing ancient memory's healing capacity. So ancient memory gets plus 0.4 endurance. Offensive, defense, and utility. Alrighty then. There's a lot I can go through here. Uh, I might go for the character specific ability though. It could be handy just to be a... What, what's dangerous implement again? Bonus damage with implements. That's not really his thing, is it? Deep pockets, additional quick slots, fast runner, arms bearer. Yeah, a lot of these things aren't necessarily super immediately handy. Let's see, spirit of decay, damage reduction against corrode. Bonus corrode damage. Okay. So passive, passive elemental effects. If I go for the right effect, it could be handy. Range recovery. I can make him focus on a specific element, but he doesn't really have that many elemental attacks right now, so not immediately useful. Wound binding. Uh, once per rest, he can start using healing. Uh, it, is it only a self effect? Allows the healing of a monster amount of health on the only on the user. Okay, but it is a self heal, which is handy, and this lets them heal on an ally, but half as much it looks like. Yeah. That could be handy, actually. Giving him field triage means he can heal up an ally between fights and sort of... You can only use it once per rest, but it could help us recover as we're proceeding through a dungeon. So I'm going to go with that. A little bit of uh, defensive maneuvers, which is what I've been focusing on so thoroughly throughout the party. Now our druid. I'm concerned about this one. Druids are pretty fucking complicated from my experience of leveling one up on my... Uh, using one in actual D&D. Okay, so, survival and lore seems to be your go-to. I'm gonna go ahead and double dose on survival for you, for now. Alright, so we have class, here's our class specific abilities. Grants wild strike burn. Druid's knowledge of the forces of nature allow him to, or her, to automatically inflict additional burn damage when spirit shifted. These are all spirit shifted abilities? Yes, they are. So, I can add... 30% bonus damage to my attacks as burn, corrode, freeze, or shock. My go-to thought is probably corrode. I'm thinking werewolf rabies from Diablo, frankly. 
but uh, various other characters have elemental attacks, but he's him having corrode might actually be more specific to him, so it's better variety overall. And I do want to make him more powerful in spirit shifted form because he's unfortunately not super effective yet. So a 30% damage bonus could be really handy, especially if it, it eats past their armor by being a different element from the base attack. Alright, that was a relatively straight success there. I'm gonna go ahead and quick save because that was a lot of uh that was a lot of leveling up to do, so I'm gonna make sure I, I quick save before we screw up and die right now. How many enemies do we have here? Cowled woman, cowled dwarf, cowled man, medrith, boar companion. Don't know much about them in general. I'm gonna say immediately. Let's uh select there we go. Wanted to establish combat because our characters weren't really in the proper position for that yet. I'm gonna say Garrix, you attack the boar companion. Same thing with Itumak. Go. We're gonna go uh, two on one with our pets to deal with that really quickly. Should work fine. Kana, you're gonna go after Medrith because you're right there in range. Uh, Edda is going to engage with the cowled woman because they're they're also right up in front of each other. Durance, you're going to immediately. Use Holy Radiance to help the party. Seems like a reasonable first step. And we're going to try to do a wounding shot on the dwarf in the back, I believe. To start doing damage to him. And we're going to use a wounding shot on the other character. Try to hobble the two bonus enemies. Meanwhile, here of Ice. Let's see what kind of fun you can do. I can go all out with spells right now, for more or less, I believe. Because uh, we're kind of hanging out in town already. So I'm not that concerned. Let's see. Burn damage to everyone in the effect. Short casting time. I like short casting times. Let's burn these fuckers. Is what I'm thinking. Alright, so I'll hopefully get a nice blast of fire on them. It might hurt the pets, which is a concern, but uh, they seem to not take health damage. They seem to just get knocked out over and over again, so I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, and I'm not too concerned about using spells right now because of the fact that... Uh, we're probably going to be able to just uh, field triage. We're, we're, we uh, can just rest at the end that's like right here if we need to. Let's get started. Well, that got messy fast. How's everyone feeling right now? Let's do a quick update. So the fire spell went off, I believe. Here's, your name's Hiravai, right? Yeah. How did Hiravai's spell go off? Three grays, one hit. Of course, it never quite works for me. Seven, five, nine... Ah, I, I mis-aimed and I hit Edar, and Edar took more damage than anyone else did, didn't they? Oh no, Boar took 22 damage, at least there's that. That could have gone better. Anyway, I'm going to say Itumak should probably focus on this guy, this cowled man right here, instead of who they were previously headed for, because that guy is right up in our face. Edar, now that you've established a melee encounter, I'm going to say do a knockdown on this cowled woman. This Boar is actually in bad shape already, which I like to see. Uh, Kana. Did I hit Kana with the fire spell too? Nope, I hit the bad guys mostly, but I did hit Edar unfortunately, but he'll he'll get back up if he takes too much damage, which is a good sign. Did you, you already got your defensive spell off, so let's do interdiction to make these enemies weaker if we can. To be very so does it, does it affect allies here? Can't quite tell. I'll just try to aim it just right. My understanding is that the red affects everybody and the yellow only affects enemies. So if I'm careful and my enemies and my allies are only yellow, then they won't be affected by this. So I'm going to try to weaken all of these guys. And here, Avi is going to follow it up with another nasty spell, probably, to keep this brief if we can. Let's see. Don't really want to pull them back necessarily, but blinding them will make them a lot less effective in combat for sure. Is this going to hit all three of them? I think it will. Alright, let's make a mess. And we'll have both of my rangers focus on this cowled man, because he's approaching us. And that's not good for us. And since... Uh, our ranger friend, Itumak's pet... I mean, their pet Itumak is already established... Is going to be fighting them one-on-one. -on -one, we'll mark that target to get bonus damage for both this ranger and the pet. Make sure I'm in slow mode here, because that went a little too fast last time. Alright, that's not good. What happened to Itumak? Prone for 1.8 seconds. Alright, so this person's right up in, on me. Do I have... I do have a dagger set. Alright. Let's switch to my melee attack. 
Just so I'm at, I'm properly set up to fight this guy one-on-one -on -one at this point. Uh, did... There's a spell going off over here. Yep, here if I cast Sunbeam, it's not done yet, though. Here if I knocked the boar... Oh, and knocked out the boar with Sunbeam. It did, uh, 5 damage to Medrith. 14 to the Kyled Woman. 17 to the boar companion, taking it out of the fight. At this stage, I think here if I... Is going to enter shape-shifting form. Kana is low on endurance. Oh, quite low on, on endurance. All right, endurance. If you can, you have like a. Oh yeah, you have a restore endurance. We'll try to use that on our injured party over here. And I'm going to try to shape-shift with Hiravai to join the melee against this cowled man, so to get him off of our uh, ranger that is not necessarily fully equipped to handle the situation. Uh, Kana's been knocked out, so that did not... That didn't quite work out for us, but one character being knocked out is... Decent odds at this point? I guess we've only taken out their boar, so we're not doing great at that point, but uh... Let's see... So some of them have to be low by now, right? Medrith? No? Caldwoman? Caldwoman's been knocked down, thankfully. Are you fighting her properly right now? I assume you've been hitting her. Uh, we'll redirect the w Garrix to fight Medrith now that the uh... Now that Kana's going down. And I'm trying to get here if I... ...to shapeshift as fast as possible to join in the fray. So we can hopefully take out this guy that's uh, that's in the middle of my team. There we go. Alright, so you are going to attack that guy and try to wipe him the hell out. Because we don't want him hanging out behind our front lines. For now... For now, Garrix and uh, Eddar should be able to hold the front line in the meantime. Endurance. Do you have any? Oh, you're currently trying to do. You do. Oh, you currently are restoring. Let's see. Restore light endurance. You got plus 18 endurance on on uh, the wolf. I just healed the wolf. All right. I would have tried to heal Edar if I knew that that uh, Kana was going to go down before I could do anything about it. But that's fine. Let's see. Do I want to do anything else at this point with this character? I could just do armor of faith to heal to keep my party strong. There we go. That'll hit like most of my allies. Probably a worthwhile approach for now. Let's watch some auto attacks trigger for a while. Sagani's target is down. So yeah, that uh, throwing our Hiravai in there quickly degraded the situation for him. He's going to change target to the Cowled Woman to keep that focus fire continuing. Medrith does not seem to be doing a great job at fighting the wolf so far. That seems to be... He seems to be holding his own for now. I'm going to redirect both of my rangers to fighting uh, Medrith. But the wolf, the wolf's gonna go after the cowed dwarf, and our shapeshifter is gonna go after the cowed woman to help out Edar for now. Edar is gonna knock down the woman again, just because knocking anyone out of the fight's better for our overall party health. And we're gonna have to switch to the bow for Sagani, and she's gonna also focus on fighting Medrith, who is going to get wounded. All right, let's watch things progress here. It's actually satisfying to have an encounter go more- Whoa! I saw a big number. Alright, let's look for here, have I? Engaged in melee. I saw like a 70 something, right? I'm not crazy there. Maybe it was a 7 and a 3. There's a 7 and a 3 next to each other, so maybe I, they, they, she, 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 maybe she just took 7 and 3. Yeah, if she took if she took, if she she took took 73 damage, she'd probably be dead right now. So she probably just took 7 and 3 and it looks suspicious, suspiciously like one number. It's, it's refreshing to have an encounter go more or less well, because, god, we had some bad ones. Uh, Durance, can you attack from, from a... Oh, you, go help finish off Medrith. Uh, you have, like, a... Staff. Yeah, that'll do damage. I don't want to cast any more spells with him right now, because this fight's more or less over, right? What did he do? Medrith activates escape. Sorry, I'm getting, like, weird hiccups for a second here. Uh, we're gonna- we're gonna be fine. We are going to be fine. They are screwed. Let's try to focus on... And just in case they lost focus when he did escape, we'll refocus on Medrith with these two rangers. Oh, he used- when he, he used escape, that made him disengage from combat successfully without, uh, attack of opportunity, didn't it? That's fine. I can just refocus on him. It'll be fine. Here, Vi, you also focus around on Medrith. Eddar, you're gonna walk over and attack the dwarf, since you're not currently engaged in melee with Medrith yet. Medrith is down. Alright. Everyone, hit that guy in the face really hard. 
fast mode for comedy. Can I can't do fast mode. Fast mode. There we go. I figured we didn't need to watch that in normal speed because he's going down. All right. So we had a success. We kind of got played there and had and got attacked by people that we didn't need to fight. Uh, I could have just let her have it. Actually, I guess that's not true. The uh, I don't think the quest completed until I talked to him anyway. So, yeah, so it was worth doing. I just got 20... F wow. Yeah, that's a lot of experience for the quest. Did I get any more experience for the kills at all? I don't know if I did, but that also might have been calculated by the initial burst. Interesting that they gave me the quest experience before... I finished the fight, though. Let's see, what's this item here? So I'd like to compare it to a... Uh, it's a fine greatsword. Two-handed. 19 to 27 slash damage. I don't know if I'd want to get rid of my shield for it, though, is a, is a concern. I'll put it on Edar just to compare it as accordingly. Save Oh, game is paused. Is Oh, I know it's supposed to be paused. I was trying to figure out why my hot. I'm not having a. I'm not getting uh, any. I'm weirdly not getting any tooltips for these items. Hood. All right. These are relative. These are mostly items I've seen before. Oh my god. Fine stiletto, one-handed. I'm probably gonna want to give that to. All right. Yeah. Let's give those to my ranger. Those could be handy melee weapons. Is that a war bow? A fine war bow. I'll compare it. It might be better than his current bow. Lots of money. Ooh. Fine leather armor. Uh, plus two damage reduction compared to normal. So any, if anyone's wearing leather right now, this is going to be better than that. I'll also put that on my main character. Fine brigantine. Plus two damage reduction. So we're getting better versions of the basic equipment. We also got a lot of money. I'll take that. Thank you. Last body. Ooh, fine me medium shield heater. Give that to Edar because he might be better than his current shield. Fine mace. Uh, plus four accuracy and 15% bonus damage. Also nice things to have. Everything else is just stash worthy. So how, just how loaded are we right now? Uh, that's not the wrong, that's the wrong inventory. There we go. 3000 gold. We are certainly better off than we have been. Okay. What's my current weapon? I just have a war bow, so by default, f fine war bow is going to be better. Because this does 15 to 24. And this does 15, oh, 17 to 27, so immediately better. And bonus accuracy and bonus damage, so we've improved. What is your current weapon? Oh, you use hunting bows. Right, you have a fine hunting bow. You're already better off then. Good for you. I'm going to throw that previous bow in there. So you are currently using a fine rapier. 12 to, th 12 to 17 piercing damage. These are stilettos. Same piercing damage. 3 DR bypass. Bonus accuracy. Accuracy. I'm actually going to go for that DR bypass, I think, for melee weapons on this character. So if I get approached, I can use these weapons that bypass DR, which means like, they can hit armored enemies. This person uses a dagger and a hatchet. They're both fine, which is not a bad option. Bonus accuracy, 12 to 17. 12 to 17. Rapier does 12 to 17. I'm sensing a pattern. Anyway, this is probably... Oh, the, the, no, the hatchet's fast too. They're all fast weapons. For some reason, it seems like a better... It makes more sense to me to have a rapier. Maybe... Wait, let's not, let's not play with her weapons. She actually might have a perk that gives her bonus hunting equipment stats, so let's not play with that until we know for sure. And I'm not going to check right now. She has fine hide armor with plus two DR. Not bad either. Let's look for someone who's already wearing one of these. Oh, there we go. So fine brigandine. I think he's already wearing a brigandine, right? Yeah. So DR 10. Recovery speed 50. Versus DR 12. Recovery uh, speed 50. So of course I'm going to put this new... Brigandine on our character. And the regular one's going to go in our stash. I also have these assassin hoods I could put on people. They're just for style, though, and they don't fit most of my characters. And I think this character's wearing the Wedic... Oh, yeah, let's not, wear the, let's not wear the creepy cult mask anymore. People are going to think I'm crazy. But the, the, that assassin hood, that'll look better in place. 
Alright, what is this? Leather armor? Is anyone currently wearing leather armor? Is that leather armor? Fine leather armor. So it has 10 DR. I mean 8 DR, and this also has 8 DR, so it's the same piece of leather armor. This person has a regular brigandine. DR 10. Probably gonna keep that on him for now. Male armor for higher DR. Uh, I'm gonna put those in the stash for now. Along with the not fine equipment we have lying around here. Oh yeah, my duelist hat. I forgot how awesome that is. I don't like this guy's hat. Let's just put, there we go. Now Kana looks pretty freaking fly. I don't really like his tur- Oh wait, no, his turban has intellect. Sorry. That's too bad because it looks really gross. Can I change his color? Oh, thank goodness. That's better. Okay. Let's just choose accordingly. There we go. Can make it look less absurd at least. That's that's much better. That bright color was not suiting me very well. Let's get a little contrast though. A little blue maybe? Yeah, that, that looks alright. Uh, vegetables, those go in the stash. Who, let's see, who can wear the duelist? Should I put the duelist hat on her? Oh my god. That's a sight. There's no one else to really put it on, right? I could put it on my silly druid, I guess. But that's, that's actually a pretty funny sight. Uh, so fine leather armor. There's gotta be someone that this will help. Are you wearing leather armor? You are. Wow. Okay, so it's, it's better than my current equipment on my main character. Good job checking your main character, Keith. The most obvious thing to check first is, hey, can this upgrade my main character? Oh, it can. What a coincidence. Uh, Mace. Let's check Edgar's weapons. So he has a saber that does 16 to 23 slash, and he's using a shield that has 16 deflection, 8 accuracy, 8 reduced accuracy, 12 deflection, minus 4 accuracy. Properties fine. So this would cut the def deflection down by four if I switch to it, but reduce, but also improve his accuracy by four. It might be an overall improvement in stat trade-off, so I might switch to that for now. Might regret it later. Uh, this is a great sword two-handed. I don't really have someone who uses two-handed swords right now, do I? This guy probably focuses on spears and also already has a fine weapon anyway, so I'll keep the sword around, but it might not be useful yet. Fine mace. Does not do more damage. It does crush instead of slash, but that's it. Ooh, DR reduction. Okay, let's look at that. Bypass 3 DR. Okay, and 4 accuracy versus this thing that just does damage. Okay, so I'm going to swap it for the mace to give him D... He, now he has DR reduction and he has uh, bypass, uh, bonus accuracy. So that's actually going to help Edar quite a bit. Beer, I believe, helps with damage reduction or... Yeah, damage reduction, so we'll keep that with Edar. Can I just stack it up on there? Yep. With all the other stuff he's had. Gotta keep those items in mind for when I think I need them, but I, I guess I didn't need them yet. Alright. I think that's a decent resolution for that situation, so... Thanks for watching, guys, like always. I'll see you next time. Got a little sidetracked dealing with this person that's trying to flee town, and... the subsequent level up and combat and everything, but... Next time, I'm sure we'll either... Yeah, we'll look into that person that went missing yeah? and see what may have happened to them. I suspect if we go into this temple, we might find someone who knows something. Because I don't know, I I see it's a I see that I see religious locations as a place of truth, but maybe they'll prove me wrong. Anyway, we'll find out next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Like always, and I'll see you next time. I say again because I realize that's what I always say, but then I already said it before because I'm a crazy person and it's getting late. Holy shit, I'm tired. Ha, ha, ha.